Hello, I'm super excited about this course and it is about Python 3 for biologists again but this one is specifically aimed at absolute beginners so if you think that you don't know much about bioinformatics or much about Python this course is just for you or if you'd like to brush up your skills you can enjoy the course some notes about this course is I mean I upload one lecture every Sunday the playlist contains about 20 video lectures and this is an introductory course it doesn't contain advanced information I use Jupyter notebook this is Jupyter notebook but you can use Python standard IDE the code works the same in this first lecture I'm going to introduce you to bioinformatics data and how to get bioinformatics data and by bioinformatics data I mainly refer to DNA RNA and protein data which are in the form of string data string means text data in order to retrieve data biological data or bioinformatics data basically we need to navigate to certain databases one of those is NCBI which is short for National Center for Biotechnology and Information this database contains several other databases and we need to get DNA data from nucleotide database so this is nucleotide database once you navigate to nucleotide database you can write down your query and you are going to be returned lots of information data so let's try this out you click on nucleotide and you are navigated to nucleotide database this database contains information about nearly every organism that has been recognized so a DNA sequence here that we want to retrieve is DTP ASA DTPase from Escherichia coli so we can write down Escherichia coli and this returns lots of DNA sequences well the first thing that we are returned with is complete genome or complete chromosome so you may not be interested in complete genomes and it's fine so it will take you a lot of time to navigate to that specific DNA sequence that you are looking for but with this database you can actually filter through unwanted DNA sequences so this is how you do it you write and in between those words then write down not complete not chromosome not genome so you don't want those three words in the result you search again this time this has returned valuable information so this one right here the second one was the one we were actually looking for you can click on this one and navigate to the information stored in the database about DTPAs in Escherichia coli you can also use this code next time in order to get this specific DNA sequence this is called GenBank or accession code there are lots of information about this and what we need to get is the DNA sequence here or the coding sequence CDS stands for coding sequence so there are two coding sequences here and we are going to talk about those later on in the course you can also retrieve the corresponding protein coding sequence that are coded by the DNA sequence which is the coding sequence in order to download DNA sequences you need to click on FASTA this is a specific type of file called FASTA file and it has a kind of a marker in the beginning this is a FASTA marker and if you draw it it's like greater sign and it is followed by accession code then the genus name which is E Escherichia then the species name then the name of the gene duty gene for DTPAs then there are other information listed here after that this is the DNA sequence that you've been looking for this DNA sequence contains return characters which are unwanted 
And in the next coming lectures, I'm going to go through the process of removing those, if you would like to. And also, it is important for you to know that each piece of information that are written here in the header has been put in a specific column. So if I draw borders around, this is the first column, this is the second column, this is the third column, and etc. So there are many columns here. It is also important to know that the DNA sequence is stored within the first column. So once you return the first column, you get the DNA sequence and the accession code. While if you'd like to get the other pieces of information, you would need to return the other columns as well, which have their first row being put information in, while the second and the other rows do not contain information. So this is important in order to understand the other aspects related to FASTA files when generating FASTA files later on in the next coming lectures. There are certain questions that this lecture addresses. One of those is how to put multiple lines of DNA sequences in Python, which is called docstring. So to do so, you would need to create something called docstring and it is created by writing three quotation marks in the beginning and three at the end. In between you write down or paste your DNA sequence. So imagine that this is a DNA sequence that you need. You paste it in between and this is how you enter it. This is the DNA sequence. If you have a look this returns the DNA sequence along with the return characters. These are enter marks or paragraph marks. You don't see these in Microsoft Office Word normally or in Notepad or whatever other programs that show text normally. And we need to deal with these return characters. We'll do that in the next coming lectures. So in the next lecture I'm going to go through how to read FASTA files in Python and how to assign coding sequences to a variable in Python. So we had coding sequences here, but it's not been marked. We need to have information about the coding sequence and return this, then input it or assign it to a variable in Python. So if assignment operator and variable, variable announcement seems weird to you, I'd recommend you go through my previous course, which is about introduction to Python programming, it's for free on YouTube and try to understand those aspects, then return back to this course. I hope you enjoyed the first lecture and thank you for joining me here.